Hello everybody and welcome back to another game review on the 5.9 Gaming Direct channel. My name is Jamie and I'll be your host for today's review. Before we get started, if you enjoy these types of reviews and want to see more, leave a like and comment on the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit the bell to stay up to date and never miss a video. Without any further delays, let's dive right in. It is no secret that Demon Slayer dominated the year of 2020. There wasn't a day that went by that you didn't hear the words Demon Slayer. It was everywhere. By the end of 2020, each individual copy of the manga sold between 2.6 million and 4.3 million, with the overall total being 82,345,447 by December 1st, 2020. Now, in the year 2021, the new Prime Minister of Japan is a huge fan of Demon Slayer and has made promises to increase the income of people who work in the anime industry. Demon Slayer is on another level right now, and with this game, it's only going to go further. Speaking of the new game, let's jump into the review. If you ever played the Naruto Storm series or DBZ Kakarot, then you will have a sense of deja vu, and a good way. Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles, as it's officially called, was developed by CyberConnect2, the same company who developed the two formerly mentioned games in Storm and Kakarot. Albeit, it is much more similar to Storm 4 in terms of exploration, where you choose a chapter and are able to explore some hubs in that specific chapter. With the reputation that CyberConnect2 has, it should come as no surprise that the graphics are amazing and breathtaking, with the design almost being that of the anime. It is the Taisho period in Japan, when a kind-hearted boy named Tanjiro finds his family slaughtered by a demon. To make matters worse, only one of his siblings survived. Her name is Nezuko, and Nezuko survived the attack of a demon, but her life has changed. She has become a demon, hungry for human flesh, and doesn't even notice who she is attacking until Tanjiro talks her out of it. Devastated by this grim reality, Tanjiro promises to save his sister and return her to a human once again, resolving himself and dedicating his life to joining the Demon Slayer Corps. Tanjiro persists to keep the promise to his sister, as well as kill the demon who murdered his family. Staying true to the anime, the game follows the anime with some arcs giving some details of what is going on in the story. The story of the game is rather short as you only experience the first season of the anime and the movie arc of the Mugen Train, but it is a really fun game overall. As previously mentioned, the exploration is limited in where you can and cannot explore. By selecting certain chapters, there are a few small hub areas in which you can walk around and explore. There are forests, towns, mansions, and manors that are available to the player to explore and find collectibles to collect. Not to mention they are a good handful of side missions that you can partake in in each of the areas. These side missions range from talking to people to battling enemies. Depending on the chapter you choose to play, the player becomes a specific character for that instance. Play as Tanjiro, Zenzitsu, or Inosuke and explore the world of Demon Slayer. When it comes to combat, it is a mirror image of Storm's combat system. However, there are differences made to the combat system. When you are attacking an enemy, there is a small meter next to the combo count, where it will fill as your combos continue to grow. However, should your combo continue past the meter timer, the enemy will immediately fall out of the combo and your combo will end. This prevents you from dealing infinite damage to the enemy and, in turn, prevents the enemy from dealing infinite damage to you. Storm 4 had a substitution mechanic where you can use substitution jutsu and save yourself out of a combo from the enemy or even dodge an incoming attack. In Demon Slayer, there are two gauges beneath the player's health bar. These gauges represent your ally's usability. Use them to attack your opponent, switch between your partners, or use both gauges to save your ally from an enemy combo. Quick disclaimer, this is based off of the PS5 gameplay and is subject to change on different platforms. In this game, there are no frame tears and no haptic feedback. The graphics are amazing and give the sense of watching the anime while playing the game. However, the game feels a little bit clunky when it comes to the blocking mechanic. If you stop your combo or even just stay still, it takes a second for your block to be registered as an input. The online times are fast with little to no delays and the online is buttery smooth, even when on Wi-Fi rather than the Ethernet cable. When fighting an opponent online, the connection is stable, allowing for enjoyable and smooth matches between players. It's no secret, as we previously mentioned, that Hinokami Chronicles was developed by CC2, who are most notably known for their work on the Naruto Storm series and DBZ Kakarot. However, there is still the question of, how does it compare to its predecessors? 
it does fairly well, still following that CC2 formula of having a fun anime fighting game. The only downside is that when compared to Kakarot and Naruto Storm, it does cut corners here and there. One main elephant in the room of that corner being cut is the roster of characters. Not including the school series characters, you only have a measly 12 characters. The game could have added demons before launch, but we're holding back on it and now released what feels like an unfinished character roster. When it comes to the stages, you also only have a handful of stages to choose from, not really diversifying the different atmosphere you really want when battling your friends. Even when a majority of those stages are set in the night, as opposed to giving you a daytime option. Even cutting out the endless tournament mode they had in the Storm series was something of a big corner as well to have been cut. Something like that can hinder them just a bit when it comes to having a group of friends wanting to play one another, but having to only face each other one at a time and constantly invite each other would be a constant annoyance. It will be no surprise to see this game start to last longer than Xenoverse 2 when it comes to the player base because the way they handle the fighting and the fun player activity of it will definitely keep players entertained and not feel burned out fast. The only thing is, Fighters has lasted a long time, especially it having a dedicated pro fighting game fanbase. Will this game get that? Only time can really tell for this game because without that dedicated professional fanbase, it might be dead within two, maybe three years later on. This game is still a little too early to tell, but it can shape up to have a lasting impact on the anime game fighting community. It will not be dead in the water early on like some other anime fighting games before it. Just as long as CC2 devotes themselves to wanting to keep this game series alive like they did when it came to the Ultimate Ninja Storm series, it will be no surprise to see it outlasting some games before it. If they decide to add the Endless Tournament mode to the game in an Eider patch, then it will definitely last longer than anticipated to some of the doubtful people out there. Gameplay is really fun overall and gives a sense of nostalgia to the Storm series with the skin of Demon Slayer. The combat does feel a little too clunky as there are some input delays in some of the moves that you do in the game. The change in some of the combat to fit the style of Demon Slayer itself was something that is done phenomenally well for a fighting game, especially for one that will make a name for itself in the fighting game anime series. The only downside is that there are no demons you can play as day one besides Nezuko, but luckily that is being added in a free DLC patch coming on later this fall. If you are a fan of the series and have played a Storm game, it is something I highly recommend you pick up. Even if you just love the series and have never picked up a Naruto Storm game, this is something that will pique your interest highly. That concludes the review of Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and let us know if you plan to pick it up or have already picked it up. If you have picked it up and have played it, share your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. We'd love to hear them. My name is Jamie, signing off here on the 5.9 Gaming Direct channel. Have a great rest of your day.